slideshow and explanation. We are recording. If somebody doesn't want their image to be captured, feel free to turn off your video. Thank you. So tonight we're going to talk about the kindergarten program. We're not here to talk about high school. We're not here to talk about middle school. We're here to talk about how to enroll your child into the kindergarten and aspects about the kindergarten program. This evening we have with us two of our principals for the dual immersion program from Walt Disney Elementary School. We had Mrs. Wong. Good evening, everyone. And from McKinley Elementary School, we have Mrs. Costella. Who might I know that Mrs. Costella break. has shared a couple of times that we do have a breakout room this evening so that families that would, are interested in the presentation in Spanish, that Mrs. Costella is going to go ahead and give the presentation tonight in Spanish. Also with us this evening, we have Mrs. Goldenberg, and she is our coordinator for the English language learner programs for the district. We have one of our kindergarten teachers here, Mr. Gutierrez, and I'm not sure if Mrs. Sanchez is here or not, or any of our other teachers. So if I'm missing somebody, I apologize. I kind of went through the list pretty quickly. Didn't notice others' names, but welcome Mr. Gutierrez and welcome once again to our families. Let so, me say one more time, Dr. Knepic, how to join the breakout room in Spanish. I was just going to say that. Go Thank right ahead. You. I was thinking you know, we share a brain sometimes. Okay. Uh, bienvenidos todos, todos. Si quieren um, escuchar la presentación en español um, con la señora Costela, nomás tienen que mirar en la parte inferior de su pantalla donde hay cuatro cuadritos y empujan allí y luego van a encontrar donde dice um, presentación en español y la palabra join. Y cuando um, hagan eso, cuando oprimen en join, entonces van a estar en un otro salón <laughs> de Zoom con la señora Costela. Y ella va a presentar todo en español. For tonight's presentation, we're going to go through the slide deck first. And then we're going to go ahead and entertain questions at the end. And we ask that when you ask questions, that your questions apply to the entire group. And if it's your private business, it's your own child, we would prefer that it not be public because we're going to say that we're going to respond that way. That if you had a question about your child and it's your private personal business, then we're going to go ahead and ask you to contact one of us, contact Mrs. Wong, contact Mrs. Costella. Uh, Ms. Goldenberg, and then uh, we can respond to you privately. Alrighty. So we'll go ahead and give everybody a chance to go ahead and select if they wanted to go to the breakout room. And then Mrs. Wong's going to take over in just a few seconds with the English presentation. Okay. And once again, this is a, for kindergarten, kindergarten enrollment. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm going to jump right in. And we are going to talk about uh, the program model that we use here in Burbank Unified School District for our dual immersion program. We use something called a 90-10 model. And this is a, a two-way bilingual program, but we really immerse our kindergarten students in the language. In, and what that means is when your little one starts kindergarten with us, 90% of their instructional day is in Spanish, their content areas in Spanish, and 10% is in English. And what that does is it really immerses them in the language and it really helps them target the learning language of Spanish. And we have found great success with this with both native, um, well, um, Spanish speaking students coming in um, and then acquiring the English, but also uh, our English only speaking uh, students, it's amazing what these kids can do by December of each year. I, I'm always amazed at kindergarten, the amount of Spanish they've already um, acquired and can use. And then what happens is, um, and the reason we chose, we, we did a lot of research in the pre-planning days of this program. Mrs. Goldenberg has been on since the beginning and really um, looked at a variety of models. And we found that the 50-50 model just really did not fill, facilitate the command of the Spanish language in the lower grades. They were still much too dependent on their English. This way, they really take ownership of um, learning the Spanish language. 
Um, and I'm not, okay, so 90% in kindergarten, it looks like they equals 4.2 days per week in Spanish overall. Um, and then a 0.5 in English. <laughs> And then at, you'll notice um, there's a sliding scale a little bit lower that goes through how we target the, um, the minutes throughout the day in the different grade levels. So we have an 80-20 model in both first and second grade. And the reason we do that in first and second grade is this is such an important year for acquiring literacy, especially really learning how to read and write and speak. And so we really want to give them as much time as we can to develop those foundational skills, because as we all, what we have learned is you only learn how to read and write in uh, one language. And then once you've really become proficient in that language, you can transfer those skills to the second language. So we really give them a really strong, solid base in the Spanish language. And then we go to a 70, 30% of their day in third grade, 60, 40 in fourth grade. And by the time they leave us in fifth grade, they are at a 50, 50 model here in the elementary school, 50% of their day in English, 50% of their day in Spanish. And it's it's very it's planned out. We have content minutes uh, in both languages, required minutes, and our teachers um, are phenomenal and um, are are trained and communicated and supported in that process. And your your children leave us. Um, our hope is they leave us with strong biliteracy in both English and Spanish when they leave the elementary school programs. Okay, can I move on? Is that too fast? Am I talking too fast too? Please slow me down. Sometimes I get excited and start talking too fast. So student eligibility criteria. <clears throat> so because this is such a desired program, there is lottery. There's a lottery to participate for all kindergarten students. Um, but you have to be a Burbank, you have to be eligible to attend a Burbank elementary school, whether you are a resident of Burbank or you work in Burbank and have applied for a, an intra-district permit, um, an intra-district permit, um, but Burbank residents do have priority in our program and are placed first. Siblings of students who are also in our program currently have additional priority and are placed in our kindergarten program first. So if they have brothers and sisters that have already been in the program, this program currently goes up through eighth grade at Dolores, Dolores Huerta Middle School, about to enter ninth grade. All of those kids kindergarten through eighth grade, if they have a brother or sister, they're gonna have priority in our kindergarten, our two kindergarten programs at McKinley and here at Disney. We do ask our parents to make a multi-year commitment, at least through the elementary school grades, which means, you know, we are a public school, but we really want you to be committed to this program because it really is a rigorous program. It's, um, but the benefits are, like I said, amazing. Um, so uh, we, re and we ask you to make that commitment for the entire elementary school years because we wanna make sure our kids have the time to develop both biliteracy and bilingual skills. And I'm gonna be honest with you, especially for our English only families, this is not easy. And, and you really need to look at your individual child and say, is, is my child uh, ready for this challenge? Is, does my child seek out um, information and wanna challenge themselves? And, and mental health wise, are they going to be okay with going through this process? Because it, it's not an easy program, but if you do devote the time and the energy, you will be so excited with uh, what your children produce. And um, also to be eligible for this program, students need to turn five on or before September 4th, 2022 to participate in this California kindergarten program. TK in dual immersion is not an option. So if your child is not gonna be turning five before September or on or before September 1st, 2022, you'll have to wait until next year for to uh, put your name into this program. Okay. Uh, whoops, I just made it bigger. I didn't change the page. Let's try that. Okay. <laughs> so how do we select our students? 
Our classes are formed of the year prior to beginning kindergarten by March of, well, for this year, it'll be March of 2022. And that will be for a tentative August 15th start date. That is still being determined. The op, uh, optimal ratio is um, for makeup of each classroom is 50% native Spanish speakers and 50% native English speakers. And the reason we do that is because we really want strong models in both languages, because this has to be a mutually beneficial program for both of our learners. And um, we, again, we have found that that's the greatest, uh, we have the greatest success when we have those balanced classrooms because we really do have strong role models. Um, if even halves cannot be achieved, if we can't get 12 and 12 to meet that 24 cap, what we do is we will add um, more for one group, but we really do wanna keep a two thirds max as the rule. We really don't want it heavy in one language over another because it does, it changes the, the balance and the progress of the program. If our students leave the program, space would become available for students on a waiting list through the end of the first semester. So that means if your child is not picked in the lottery to get in either of these two kindergarten classrooms, we do keep that waiting list active. And I will tell you, we have had people in the past leave, but we will only replace it with English only students up to December of 2022 because we again the curriculum there it, it's so uh it's rigorous and it's challenging and if you try to put a student in who has not had any of this foundational work that has taken place from september to december we find kids aren't as successful so we have made that cap based on our experience um Students will be selected by the lot by lottery on March 7th, 2020 of this school year. And we're going to explain the whole how do you apply process. But again, Burbank residents would get first priority to our program. Um, our wait list would be established immediately after the lottery. Um, and on the wait list, Burbank residents still have priority placement. So I don't know if uh, Dr. Knopic or Ms. Goldenberg want, wants to speak on that. Um, just because I've never been part of the lottery. So, or is that enough? Oh, Maybe. in the past, it was um, Gabriella Platten did it with either a member of the PTA or DLAC. And it was simply a matter of turning all the applications upside down, putting numbering them, putting all the numbers in a hat and pulling the numbers and saying, and okay. then creating a list. So that happens right away. So you're you're chosen for the program and then you're, the wait list is developed all on the same day as the lottery. And I do know that the lottery is a uh, multiple of people. It's not just one person developing the whole, <laughs> who's gonna get into what program. I, I believe that there's a parent rep and there's a district representation. In and then that. we do phone call when, after we select two. And if some parents need a couple, a day or two, we go ahead and give them a little bit of time. We don't give them a lot of time because we do want to go ahead and complete our list. And we also have to set it up for next school year too. Okay. okay. Ms. Gold, Mrs. Goldenberg, tell me again when you wanted to jump in, you said that there was a slide that you wanted to speak about. Did I already pass over it? No, it's the end of slide five. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> so, Let's talk about the application process. How are we going to get this going? What do you need to do? So first, what you need to do is beginning January 24th, that's when our enrollment um, opens for Burbank Unified School District, you need to register online with your home school. So that's the school that you live in the boundaries of Burbank. That's step one. And regardless, um, you don't come to McKinley and you don't come to Disney to register unless we are your home school. Okay, so that's step one. Make sure next week, next Monday, you <laughs> get online and start that registration process. The next step is you have to complete a dual immersion program application. And those are going to be available on the BUSD dual immersion website beginning also Monday, January 24th, next Monday, the same day that our enrollment opens. So those are the two most important things you need to do. 
Um, so and I'm going to emphasize it because it's nice and big and bold for everyone. Both the dual immersion application and the online registration have to be completed at your registration time at the, your school of residence to be required uh, to be even considered for application into the dual immersion program. So if you just fill out the dual immersion program application, but don't fill out the online application process, you won't be considered and vice versa. If you apply at your home school, but forget to do the dual immersion program, your name is not going to get in that lottery pick. Um, the deadline to do both of the complete both of these tasks is Friday, March 4th, because the lottery is going to be held on Monday, March 7th. So there's a little caveat there. You'll see a little uh, asterisk. One other thing is students who say that their students, parents who um, on the application process report that their students are bilingual will need to participate in a short oral assessment to determine the level of their bilingual abilities. Uh, parents of these students will be notified of time slots for this assessment, and that will take place in uh, probably the end of January, early February. So Ms. Goldenberg, I don't know if you want to speak more to that point. That is, yes, thank you so much. The um, assessment will be done online using Zoom. We are not going to bring kids, you know, because of the current conditions, we're not going to bring four-year-olds into the office and sit there with masks on and try and get them to talk. <laughs> it's kind of difficult. So we'll do, uh, I'll do, I'm the one who does it. I'm not a native speaker, but I am bilingual. I also have a bilingual credential and I've taught um, in bilingual education back when it was called bilingual education. The, I just wanted to let you know what the assessment entails because a lot of times parents will say, well, they know some Spanish. If they know some Spanish, then they're not a native Spanish speaker. So they wouldn't qualify on the native Spanish speaker side. Some students are completely bilingual and that's great. Um, so the, if they know only Spanish or they know equally both languages, um, we would just assess them for the fluency in Spanish. The um, assessment is not like, do you know your ABCs? Do you know your colors? Do you know your numbers? It's not academic in nature because we're looking for those Spanish models, students who can speak in complete sentences. Um, I show them pictures. I ask them for, actually, let me back up. <laughs> we start with a Simon Says game to see if they have the um, comprehension, the oral comprehension. And then I show pictures and ask them names of things and what common household items, what they're used for. And then it progressively gets harder and I have to, and I show them um, a series of four pictures and tell them a story, then they have to retell it to me. And I, we're not looking for like the great American novel to be you know, repeated back, but we do need, you know, sentences. We do need um, language, you know? So, um, and don't worry if you think your kid's not going to do well on Zoom. We had so many kids who qualified last year they had no problem on zoom so um and if you have any other questions um about that you can put it in the chat and as i and when we get to the questions we can answer what's in the chat sorry that's all thank you mrs goldenberg um how the lottery will work i kind of jumped ahead of myself in that last slide but it will take place on march 7th at the district office in instructional service department and um the p there will be a pta parent rep as long as well as a dlac our district english language advisory committee parent rep will assist with the drawing as well as a district uh, representative um, students names from each language group are assigned a number. So nobody's looking at names and the numbers are placed in a box. They're shuffled by one of our PTA representatives or our DLAC representative and the process is repeated for the uh, both groups. So they just go through and pick one, two. And um, again, I just wanna emphasize, ooh, what I do, <laughs> where'd I go? Um, excuse me, siblings of the current program do not participate in the lottery as they're added to our list automatically. Uh, once the parents inform the instructional services of their desire to have their sibling participate in the program. 
If there are fewer applicants than available open spots for either part of class of the class composition, a lottery will not be held for that group. Those students will be placed in the class after placement of siblings. So um, we have never had a year where the entire class has been taken up by siblings, but I will tell you, we've had quite a few spots taken by siblings. Um, Families, okay, so then the lottery takes place, the numbers are drawn, um, probably uh, phone calls will begin the next day, I imagine. When you receive that very exciting phone call that you've got into this program, you have 24 hours to make a decision about either attending the, which uh, dual immersion program you would like to attend or electing to attend their regular neighborhood kindergarten class. So sometimes people go through this process and then at, at the final, at the end of it, decide they're just gonna stay in there at their home school for kindergarten. Um, so just make sure you know, you can't wait days upon days to make that final decision because we really are trying to get those class um, lists together and uh, notified and, and make, start making plans to begin the next school year. For those families whose children were not selected, students will be placed on a wait list in the order they were picked in the lottery and parents will be notified if an opening in the dual immersion program should become available throughout the, um, for the next school year, again, through December of 2022. Now, um, this is something I don't know and I probably should. Are those families notified that they made the wait list? or are, if they don't hear from anyone, they should just assume they've made the wait list. They're notified that they're on the wait list and of their number on the wait list. Fantastic. So you will be notified either way, whether you are selected for this program or if you've been put on our wait list. For kindergarten, inter-district transfer applicants will be placed in the program if there are spaces a bit available after Burbank residents have been placed. So again, if you work in Burbank and you're applying for an inter-district permit to bring your child in for this dual immersion program, Burb our Burbank residents are going to have priority over um, you wanting to be in this program. Okay. Program hours. How can you start beginning to plan for next year? Well, I do want to say if you are selected for this program, you will be invited back to both schools over the summer before school starts um, with lots of information. You'll probably even be uh, brought in before we go on summer break just to give you an overview of kindergarten in general. And then there'll be specific uh, dual immersion information. But plan for a five hour day. Uh, both McKinley and Disney dual immersion kindergarten students attend school from 8.30 in the morning until 1.30 in the afternoon. They both have a morning nutrition break as well as a 42 minute lunch break throughout that time span. Program, our, our program requires more time in order to get the full benefit of both language, um, meaning more time. Some of our kindergarten, um, kindergarten classes in our English only program are not all day. I do believe McKinley has an English only kindergarten program that is all day. My, um, my program here is only four hours for my kindergarten in English only. Students do, oh, I already, again, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Students stay here at school for lunch as well as nutrition. And we do have a fee-based childcare available at both um, schools. There is um, uh, Around the Bell, which offers uh, before school in the morning as early as seven o'clock until school starts at 8.30 where someone's watching your children and then walking them over. We also have programs where they're picked up at 1.30 and kept um, in the AT, around, at Disney, it's around the bell. And I'm not sure, Dr. Kanopic, do you know at McKinley what the program is for the fee base? Is it around the bell as well? Okay. Around the bell. And then when you get to first grade, we have another option. We have ACEs or after school days. And so we'll talk more about that when you get to first grade. Um, classroom support. One of the beautiful parts of this program is we know how challenging it is and we, we want to provide your chil children with every opportunity to be successful and thrive and really truly be bilingual and biliterate at the end of it. 
So each classroom in kindergarten through third grade at both Disney and McKinley has a three hour classroom assistant. These assistants are also bilingual and biliterate. They speak English and Spanish and they work under the direction of the classroom teacher to provide assistance to individual students in small groups and, um, and a whole group. I mean, they're fantastic. And they really, so it's for 24, 24 to one is a normal ratio of adult to student support in our English only programs. This is a 12 to one ratio. So it is, it is very beneficial. We also love our parent volunteers. Um, COVID's kind of put a little damper on that, which has not been fun, but um, you're very, very important to the success of our program. We encourage parent uh, parental volunteers and parent involvement. We have lots of ways for you to help, whether you're a working parent or a uh, stay-at-home parent that wants to come on in and volunteer. And by being bilingual or knowing Spanish is not a requirement for you to lend a helping hand. We need you, so come on in. Um, this is a big overview timeline for parents, just kind of the uh, dates of agendas and what to expect. So tonight we're having this informative parent meeting over Zoom. Again, applications, you can start applying at your home, your resident school um, on Monday. Then that's when our school registrations begin. You also are gonna want to complete the dual immersion uh, application for this program that can be found on the website starting on Monday. And I don't know if we maybe need to show how to access that from the website for our newer families. I can do that after this presentation. And um, the deadline for submitting that dual immersion application and enrollment is March 4th, because remember, here comes the lottery on Monday the 7th. So we want to make sure, I think it's a Monday. Is it March 7th, a Monday? Okay. <laughs> um, and March 8th, you'll start getting your notification by telephone. And we will have a dual immersion uh, orientation meeting for parents and students at the school sites. We have something called a sneak peek where we invite you and your child to come on campus the week before and you get to pop in and um, see the kids' classrooms. And I believe McKinley does something similar and has a welcome family picnic, welcome back family picnic. And then again, tentative first day of school is August 15th. So and all those on-site activities would be dependent upon COVID conditions and health conditions. Thank you for that reminder. Yeah. I'm really hopeful that we're, it's not gonna be an issue and that we can have you all back on campus where everyone's supposed to be. Um, so that is that. And questions or concerns. So after this presentation, like we said, we'll give you, provide you with an opportunity to have a little question and answer. But you can also, if you think of something after you walk away from this presentation today, please feel free to call, contact Dr. Peter Kanopic. He is our elementary uh, instructional director of instructional <laughs> services for elementary, right, Dr. Kanopic? <laughs> And um, he can be reached either by that telephone number or by email. And all of our emails in Burbank, just so you know, are first name, last name at burbankusd.org. So if you ever want to get a hold of someone, it's uh, something simple to remember. I am the site principal here at Disney. It's Molly Wong at burbankusd.org. Or you can reach me by that. That's the school telephone number, 818-729-0100. And, uh, Mrs. Costella can be reached at Liz Costella at BurbankUSD.org and again by phone at 818-729-2000. Um, and I believe that is the end of this presentation. I do think though, I wanna stop sharing for a moment and take you to the website so you can find when we start. So just give me a minute. I'll start sharing my screen again. So here I am. So let me start sharing. Can you all see my screen there? Yes. So this is the Burbank Unified School District's homepage. And the way you get to it is you're going to type in www.burbankusd.org. And on this website, you can find tons of information. And so 
to find the, um, the dual immersion program tab, it's gonna be under program. So if you'll see up above, there's district information. You can find all sorts of information on the drop down screen. Schools, and I'll, I'll take you through the schools too, because there's some important information there. Different departments. So if you forgot how to get, who do I need to talk to, talk to in instructional services, you can click on that tab and go there. Well, we have programs and under programs, if you drop down, we have dual immersion. You're just gonna wanna click on that dual immersion, double click, and it's going to have all sorts of information. So like tonight's invitation and um, meeting link we're on here. There's brochures in different languages about our program and I am Matt and it says applications will be available after the parent meeting. So um, on Monday, the applications, you'll just come onto this page and click on that and be able to access that application. I also wanted to direct you to the elementary schools uh, tab, and you can just scroll down to the different schools. You'll see McKinley and Disney are at the very bottom. And so you just click on the view website. And again, this is a great place if you're looking for information on enrollment, about our different um, programs. Um, and there's just lots of great information and it's a great way to get to know each of our schools as well. And then um, there's virtual tours you can sign up for with the dates. There's all sorts of great information here. So you're going to want to check those out. And I just wanted to go back and show you ours as well. And Disney's um, same thing. We have the dual parent. We have, you know, Monday memo, kindergarten information, but we also have different, just a little bit about our school, our staff, our uh, community. Um, and this is where you can find a lot of, a lot of great information as well. So that I'm going to stop talking because I have talked a lot and I hope I didn't go too quickly for all of you, but I would like to have a per, provide an opportunity for you to ask and answer any questions you might have for us tonight. So we're going to go ahead and look in the chat and start in the chat and then uh, ask questions. So once again, this presentation is about kindergarten, the kindergarten dual immersion program, the process to enroll into uh, the dual immersion program as a kindergarten child. So let me ask this. If a child is currently in transitional kindergarten, do they re-enroll or do they bypass enrollment? The child's in TK now. So they would just go ahead and, and just do the dual immersion because they're yes. already enrolled in the system. Ms. Goldenberg? Yes. I thought you were asking the audience. I'm like, no, I'm asking you or Miss Wong. <laughs> yes, they all they have to do is fill out that application. On the application, there's a question that says, "Are is your student currently enrolled in a school?" And you would check yes because they're enrolled. It, and it could also be that they're enrolled. Wait, does Horace Mann still have a program? They do, right? So if they're enrolled at Horace Mann or they're enrolled in a TK in Burbank, you you check yes. Horace Mann students need to enroll in the school district. Oh, that's right. That because they're preschool. Yes. I stand corrected. Yes. Do, do you want me to open the chat or I'm going down to the next one? Okay. Uh, one question has to do with interdistrict uh, applications and when does that process open? And I know last week on Thursday, we did a presentation on general enrollment into transitional kindergarten and uh, regular kindergarten. And so the interdistrict application opens, I believe it's in March, but I could stand corrected. I've got to gotta go to the website. I, I believe it is too. I'm looking it up really quickly. So an interdistrict application, uh, application would be for, let's say, a family that lives uh, in Glendale and they want to transfer their child into Burbank, or they live in LA Unified, like say North Hollywood, Studio City, and they want to transfer into Burbank. So you have to apply to go ahead and have permission from your home school district to come into Burbank. 
And that goal is not only for dual immersion, but for all the programs here and all the grade levels too. So the home district has to release you. It's also like a, a, a financial trans, a transaction that happens between the school districts too. So, but, and it's just yeah. like if a Burbank family would go to Glendale, let's say, they have to get permission from us to leave our district. Right. So that is not going to be accepted until March 1st through April 5th. Yep. Normally we have about 75 to 100 uh, resident applicants in the district and we have about 48, 50 seats available. And I'm reading through the chat here. So someone's asking about is priority given to students in the school schools district or to just Burbank residents. And so we keep on saying priority is given to Burbank residents. And so when we say that, we're saying that Burbank residents would attend Burbank schools. So we give priority for students that attend Burbank schools, like in a TK situation, or they live in Burbank. There's a question here, should we consider uh, dual immersion if we think our child is similarly fluent in both languages? Yes. That was a question about for the assessment though. Oh. Mm -hmm. It says bilingual assessment, should we consider this only if we think our child is similarly fluent in both languages? So yes, I'm only doing the assessment if you, are going to tell me that the kid is either bilingual or um, native Spanish speaker, um, not kids who, you know, because some kids learn little words and phrases and they can understand. But again, to be a model for the Span for, on the Spanish speaking side, they need to be able to speak it to not just understand. There's a question about uh, is the class at each school set at 24 or is it another number? It's actually, we usually do put them, uh, we get, we, historically we've gone to 26 because, and the reason is because we do lose kids, unfortunately, you know, life people happens. Move. Yeah, people move, people's, you know, work changes, they move out of state, COVID happens. So we have lost some students. So we like to pad it a little bit. Um, versus the 24 to one, just to account for that. And Ms. Goldenberg, if you see a question there too, just throw it out there too. Oh, I started typing up the, the questions oh. on my other screen with the answers so we can easily post them to the website tomorrow. Okay. So when we apply to dual immersion, is it to both schools with DI programs? That's up to you. We ask you what your preference is, but the thing is that we won't fill up, like we, if we fill up one school and there's only spots at the other school, then that's what we offer you. <clears throat> and- In the oh, presentation, it, Mrs. Wong talked about um, classes being generally 24 to one and that um, in the bilingual program, we do have instructional assistants that work in the program too on a daily basis. And so the, the student teacher, student instructional assistant ratio uh, is 13 is to less. one. Yeah. yeah, it's really 13 to one. Yeah, there you go. There's a lot of interdistrict permit questions. And I know in the past, people who have lived outside of Burbank, but who work, in Burbank who qualify for an interdistrict permit, they have filled out the application, but we put it to the side. We can't put you in the lottery because we, it, we have to fill it up with Burbank residents first. If your child is a native Spanish speaker or your child is bilingual, we can again, hold on to the application. I can do the assessment, but we can't do any placing until we've placed everyone else. This is a question about when is the presentation for kindergarten children going into first grade? So we would go ahead and transition the 24 to 26 kindergartners into first grade automatically. And so the school would go ahead and have um, 
information about the first grade program and the first grade teachers would meet with the parents and, and explain the school program. And Mrs. Wong, you might want to talk to that just a little bit more if you needed to. Um, yeah, I, um, I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> first grade presentation. Oh yeah. Transitioning you from don't kindergarten to Normally, first. I, are you specifically saying for dual immersion presentation from kindergarten to first or well, because this is dual immersion, I'm thinking dual immersion right here. Yeah, we don't usually have a dual immersion for transferring from kindergarten to first grade uh, meeting, parent meeting. We have in the past had a dual immersion PAC meeting um, where we just meet with all kids, uh, parents from all grade levels that are in our, currently in our dual immersion program. So I think that's more what how we would address that. And at back to school night, and there might be another opportunity, the first grade teachers, whether they're dual immersion or gen ed, they would talk about their program. Um, well, for sure they would talk because once you transition to from kindergarten to first grade, that then you will be invited to back to school night and all that information. But we also like to use... Um, open house we have in the past to pop in and um, <laughs> kind of take a preview of what to expect next and kind of look in the classroom and introduce yourself but uh, you'll definitely believe me you'll be you'll get tons of information about what that program will look at the beginning of each school year once you're in the program and just to re-emphasize if our home school is not disney it's not mckinley do we need to register for our home school and then the dual immersion application. Yes, that is correct, perfect. But you don't need an intra-district transfer. You just apply for the program. No, you just apply for the program. And then if you're picked, either if you're a Spanish speaker that is selected or there you have go through the lottery and I, or qualify for the Spanish side, uh, then you're in the program. And then the in, inter, intra district permit is just granted to you based on acceptance into the program. There's a family asking about a bigger picture about dual immersion and about middle school and high school. And because that is so many years away, it's hard to predict here and now and say for sure what the middle school program and high school program would look like. We'll offer it for sure but I can't really describe exactly how it's gonna be and promise you today how it's going to be, but I can give you just an assurance that there, there will be a program. If we're already registered at our home school in TK, do we need to register, re-register? And the answer to that is no, you're already enrolled in Burbank Unified. But you have to, uh, put in that dual immersion application piece yes. or you won't be considered for this program. Yes. And I should have mentioned too that the middle school that students transition to would be Huerta Middle School. We uh, there's a question about can you provide numbers from years past of seats taken by siblings and how many and once again, that kind of depends on family dynamics and those kind of things. Some years we have more and some years we have less. So it, it, it varies from year to year. As Ms. Wong said, it sometimes it's like half, sometimes it's not. Right. And the thing is, if you know anyone who has kids already in the program and they have also an incoming kinder just like you, make sure that they let us know because we don't know if there are siblings out there unless they apply. When you register for your home school, you're registering for their kindergarten program. And so you have a seat, so to speak, in that kindergarten program. Then you're also applying for the dual immersion program too. And then when we have the lottery on March 7th, we contact you March 7th, 8th, right around there. And then you can accept to go into the program. Then your, 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 your seat, let's say it's at Stevenson, gets transferred, so to speak. It's given up and you're no longer at Stevenson. You're going to be at Disney or McKinley. But then if you're not selected, you still have a seat at the home school, and in this case, I used Stevenson as an example, you still have a seat at Stevenson. 
How long has the program been in effect, Mrs. Ms. Goldenberg? Nine. Nine years. Yeah. Because the, the, the inaugural class are in eighth grade right now. Yeah. Nine years. Also, somebody asked if your child is an English kinder and wants to go to first grade in dual immersion. That's something that we said in the beginning, the Eng native English speakers can't join beyond the middle part of um, kinder because they'd be too far behind. Yeah. Once you we've gotten to December of the kindergarten year, if your child hasn't been participating in program and they're an English only student, it's really hard to make up um, and have the foundation that they're going to need to be successful. It, it, it's very, it is rigorous. There's a question about, let's say, for example, a family moved out of Burbank. They're originally here in Burbank. They lived in Burbank. They lived here for multiple years. And maybe, you know, when the child gets in second, third, fourth grade, for whatever reason, the family moves to uh, pretend Glendale. Mm -hmm. Are they kicked out of the program? So you stay in the program, but you have to ask for an inter-district transfer. So you have to transfer and get all of your you know, information basically from Glen Glendale's got to give you permission to come to Burbank, but you would stay in the program. And this is really important because, you know, we say once you're in the program, you're in the program and we've got you until uh, fifth grade. But if you do move out of the boundaries of Burbank after living in Burbank, you do have to go through that process because it is a legal process. And the your school district of your new residence has to get, release you and we also have to accept you, which we will if you're in the program, mm -hmm. but we just have to be transparent and communicate that. There's a question about if your home school is one of the program schools and you're selected in the lottery, will you be given preference for the home school? And that depends on where you are in the order. Right. Because if you're number 20, and the others have already chosen your home school, then you'd be offered a position at the other school. And the, is the program different at the two schools? Well, only as much as schools are different, but the program's the same. The program's the same as in many respects as the English program in terms of the standards that are covered, the content that's covered, the difference is the language of instruction. And I have people ask me all the time when they, you know, are bringing their kid for a Spanish assessment. So which one is better, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, that is just an unfair choice. It, it's like, I can't choose. It's, there's, there's- what's Principal that of called? Disney, I'm gonna tell you, you can't go wrong at either school. Yeah. You're gonna get a, a stellar education at either of our dual immersion programs, 100%. One uh, piece of information I just wanna clarify with people is that if you do live out of the district, I would encourage you to go ahead and apply for the program. And I know that the um, release date from the home district is afterwards. We have, to, we have to place our residents first. And to be honest with you, more than likely, our residents are going to take all the seats. But then again, I don't know. I can't predict what's gonna happen. But chances are, given the history, We've always placed residents, but is there an outside chance that we place all of our residents and we still have five, seven seats available? It could happen. So I would encourage you to go ahead and enroll in the dual immersion program. But then once again, and you can start to go ahead and, and, and start the process to get released from your home school. Every school district has a different timeline, but go ahead and start that process. And when we get to that bridge, um, we will be in contact with you. But once again, historically, we have filled the program with Burbank residents, which we're required to go ahead and place first. There's a, a question about the hours of instruction at kindergarten at Disney. So for our dual immersion, I, I believe it's the same at both of our schools, five hours. We start at 8.30 and we finish by 1.30. My English only program is less hours than McKinley. Uh, my, my teachers uh, teach four hours for kindergarten in the English only program. There's a question about um, going into first grade into dual immersion and chances are there would never not 
there would, there would not be a seat available. Uh, we do accept transfers from a dual immersion program from another district into our school district. So you have to be, let's say in Glendale, dual immersion. And if we have seats available, you can transfer into Burbank when there's seats available. And that ha if that happens in second grade or third grade, we would gladly take. And we uh, and just also to be accept if students come in from a Spanish speaking country. Exactly. And, uh, first, second, first through fifth grade. Exactly. Or even in the middle school, in the exactly. social science class in Spanish, they've accepted native speakers of Spanish from other countries. Wonderful. Historically, yeah. how many people were on the waiting list? Historically, probably about 40. Could be oh, 50. Hi it's higher. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was 70 to 100. It is. Um, Um, I have, I live in Upland, but work in Burbank for seven years. Do I still have to get permission from my district? My daughter has attended Burbank YMCA childcare since she was three months old. Yes, you do. Because again, this the school district has to release you and we, we have to accept you for our permits. Burbank YMCA is not part of Burbank Unified School District. They're a separate uh, organization. I know. I'm sorry too. I have. Yeah, a I'm so too. sorry. <laughs> I have we will be posting this uh, recording onto the website. We're going to be posting the applications. I know that uh, you know, we will we will post them, and they'll be up there for Monday for sure. Okay. You don't have to hurry up and get them into us either, because we're not going to do the lottery and it, until March seventh. We don't. Uh, we don't mark a uh, date stamp, time stamp, the and, uh, registrations. We just gather all that we have on that day based on the cutoff, and then we number them. And if you turn it to into us on February 20th, it's the same as if we get it to us on February 1. It doesn't matter. There was a question about if selected for the program, are we automatically assigned a school or can we choose? So our... It, again, it goes back to how many spaces have already been taken at each of the schools based on siblings and then based on where you are in the lottery number. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's still choices at both schools, you'll get to choose. But if there's a school that's filled up, then you'll be assigned a school or or asked if that's, you know, would you like to attend that school? You have the opportunity to say yes or no, and then we'll move from there. So once again, there's a question about a child care. Child care is different than the dual immersion program. So it is true that when students attend Horace Mann daycare that's currently run by the YMCA that you would get into the ATV program, but it doesn't automatically mean that you're going to get into the dual immersion program. And the reason is because we have so many spots so I do think if this is something you're seriously considering and after you've uh, maybe possibly taken one of our virtual tours and decided you're committed to this program, I definitely would reach out and start getting your name on wait lists um, because I'm sure there's already a wait list for ATB to be quite honest. I, I think there already is at my school, so. And just look, look at it generally that let's just say that uh, one of the questions is asking, the child went to the dual immersion program for kinder, oh, sorry, yeah, kindergarten first, maybe second grade. Then the family gets transferred due to business reasons, studio reasons, whatever. They are out for third grade. Can they come back into the dual immersion program as a fourth grader? So they were here, K-1-2, left for third grade. Can they come back as a fourth grader? If they transfer to a dual immersion bilingual program somewhere else, for sure, we'll take, we'd be happy to take you back if you move back into our boundaries. Or if you move to a, a native Spanish speaking country for a year, <laughs> uh, we'd be happy to take you back. But if they, if you move and go to an English only program and then try to come back, I, that's most likely not going to happen. Yeah, we, we'll probably give an assessment. I say probably because it doesn't happen. It's, it's, a, it's an exception. It may have happened once maybe since I've been here um, that we would go ahead and assess the child and go ahead and see, hey, is this the best placement at that point in time? 
because students really advance very, very quickly in Spanish. You'd be amazed what our fifth graders, fourth graders and fifth graders can do. I'm totally blown away, shocked. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, 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 it's life-changing for these kids. It's, it's, it really is amazing. It's truly a gift. Yeah. Um, someone asked, can you have, give us any input on what happens if life changes and we have to move and your child ends up in it having to go to an- I was just talking about that. Oh, is that the one you were asking about? Yeah. Okay. Would they be technically be behind in learning how to read or write in English? Um, I mean, we hope not. Uh, the hope is that if they go to second grade and they have been in the Spanish program, they have a strong foundation. They've learned, they know how to read. They know how to write. They know how to speak. They just would take some time to transition. If you're an English only family, this might be a little easier transition. If you're a Spanish, uh, a Spanish uh, uh, speaking family only, there might be a little time because as, as research, research shows, it takes five to seven years to truly acquire a second language. So there might be a little lag, but I, it's not going to be, um, I mean, I can't guarantee it hundred percent. I don't know your child particularly, but it, it, they're gonna have skills and be able to make that transition. It just might need a little extra time, but you're gonna be okay. They're gonna be okay. Dr. Kanopic, there's a question in the chat that came up in mine and I didn't know the answer. It's somebody who's currently attending Horace Mann and they were told that they were going to have um, priority into the ATB program for this year, even though it's now YMCA. Is that still true? Yes, we still honor that transition. Yes. Um, someone asked, can they see the lottery via Zoom? And we are not going to be doing that. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry, did I miss that? Was that our- No, 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 we, we didn't share that. Okay. Yep. yep. So at this point in time, I think that's all the questions we have. You may have something further. So feel comfortable in contacting Ms. Goldenberg, Mrs. Costella, Mrs. Wong, as well as myself, and uh, we will get back with you. All righty. Thank you all for being here. Tonight. Thank you. All righty, have a good evening. Are we still recording? We are still recording, I think.